Hi there, Matt Filio in the studio. Thanks for joining me today. I'm continuing to work on this 11 by 14 portrait of the pastor who's deceased. And um, in the last video, I did the initial layers, um, basically just glazing in simple colors um, in the background, um, on the uh, vestments, and then on his face. Um, so we're doing two things. We're laying in the colors, but we're also blocking in the values, which is just as important. Um, a lot of artists wonder, you know, how do I get skin tones accurate? And they're so concerned about getting the right recipe for a skin tone. And that's not really the most important thing. The most important thing is to get, first of all, the right form, getting the spatial proportions between features and the shapes of the features accurate. And then number two, getting correct value shapes. And those value shapes would be all the kind of shapes that show um, the nose and the cheeks and the mouth and the lips, understanding the light where it's coming from and how those shadows, both surface shadows and cast shadows, create the illusion of three-dimensional form. And so if you get those things accurate, then color would be your last thing to dial in. Um, so don't be quite so concerned about skin tone, be more concerned about form and then value. And what I'll be working on today is uh, darkening the background a little bit more um, so that his face stands out in greater contrast, getting some more depth on the vestments, you know, coloring in the different tones and values that make up, you know, the robes that he's wearing. And then also on the face, you know, I blocked in an initial shadow shape for the left side of his face, showing that the light is coming from the right hand side. He's got shadows here. It describes kind of the way his face looks as a unique individual. Um, but what I want to do is then blend that out and start getting transitional values into the rest of the face and working some color in as well. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'm going to grab large flat edge brush. I think this is a three quarter inch brush. <clears throat> I'm going to darken the background a little bit more. We're going to take some romb or dark and ultramarine blue. Kind of mix them up together. Want to make a nice gray. And then I'm going to just work that in. Now there'll be a lot of different tones going in here. And we all like to have a little bit of depth in the background and so eventually I want to get that in there too. But first just to uh, get some contrast and some depth in the overall portrait. I'll leave maybe this area here vacant just so it gives it a little more light in the top corner. And then one of the things I like to do too is if I have the light on this side of the face, it's kind of nice to make the background darker. And then to maybe make it lighter on the other side. So I think to do that I'll actually pull some color off just a bit here. Just pull it off, maybe I can use this rag to kind of dab that a bit. Just in retrospect, that's probably not the best way. The best way would actually be to not avoid painting it at all. But I just decided, you know what, I think I'll have this area a little lighter on the bottom and make it a little darker on this side, just to add more contrast where it's lighter. Um, but I'll have to accentuate that in some future layers. So not a big deal. Okay. Now I also want to go over his robes with just another layer. We'll take ultramarine blue and we'll just go over them again. It's gonna take some it's gonna take some repeated work to really get the right color and the right value. But again, this is very translucent. I'm using matte medium to thin it out with the glazing technique. 
so it will take some work to really get what I want on there. Get that up to the edge a little bit more. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to add some coloring in for the hair. We'll take romb or dark and how about a little bit of raw sienna just I'll show you what I'm doing here I'm mixing the two together with some matte medium because I do notice some blonde striations in his hair but I think it will take some additional colors besides that as well he has some gray in there so I want to leave room for that Now, now what I want to do is get some uh, coloring in for his face. <coughs> now I'm going to rinse off my brush. and grab some fresh matte medium put it over here in an unused area on my palette and let's just get some tone on his face and I want to get this kind of pinkish tone in here it might be a little overdone though oftentimes photographs do tend to accentuate colors more than they are in real life this might be a little more accurate a representation of his skin tone so I should keep that in mind as I paint not to overdo it um, but I'm going to take some burnt sienna in this case and just go over that with a little bit of a glaze that's not going to be the final skin tone it's just uh, begin to slowly slowly shift it over to what it should be want to get the right opacity here so it actually does make a difference and I'll be going over it with um, highlights as well and mid-tones and then the darkest values too We might have to also add some different colors like alizarin crimson into the mix. But for right now, I think this will do the trick. All right, now that that's done, what I want to do is look at his vestments. This might be a good picture for that. And see what I'm looking at and it's just straight white but I want to get that white represented in here a little better um, so I'm gonna go over some areas with titanium white but also some of these shadows that are done in sepia tone I want to make them not so sepia toned kind of cool them down in tone so I'm gonna do that as well grab a round brush we'll take some titanium white just so it has enough opacity to cover over we'll mix it into this grayish color for the background and then let's just go over some of these little shadowed areas And oh, that might be a little too strong. And I don't want it that blue. This is uh, this V line represents kind of a little chain that holds that cross. No. Oh.
just going over and softening all the lines and using some short vertical strokes and kind of um, blending it a little bit with my finger as I go along. Go over these shadows even a bit. Just soften them up. Now, let's um, go over with some straight titanium white and we'll see what kind of highlights we can get in here to really show that this actually is white that he's wearing. So I'm just going over with straight titanium white. with the paint just not to cover up all the lines of detail I created with the, the sketch. I might thin that out just a little bit so it goes on smoother. And then also on his shoulder we'll get that area. That pop out just a little bit. And on the sides here as well. We'll go over some of those shadows a little bit because I'll have to go over them again anyway. This will start to look like white a lot more after the other areas in the painting get darker by contrast. So it's all a process. <clears throat> because color and value really is all subjective. And it all depends on what's around it. That'll make the biggest difference. Okay, now that this is done, let's go back to oops, some of the other photos. The main photo that we're working from. And I'm going to add just a little bit of white with some of that bluish color from the background mixed in. Just going into his hairline just to show that we should have some gray on the side. Just start getting that worked in there ever so slightly. All right. So right now it looks maybe like a sketch with watercolor on top of it. It's very, very light. There's a lot more shading and depth we have to capture, but got to start somewhere. And this is what we have for now, but as we go along, We'll be able to add a lot more depth to it. Um, let's see if there's anything else I can add to this particular layer. Let's see if maybe we can start adding some skin tones, some sh uh, bridges between the shadows, like the shadow on the left hand side, the really defined value edges, and start to slowly blend that into some gradations um, as we get into the darker values into the mid-tones and then the highlights on the face. So I'm going to see if I can do that on this video before I call it done. Let's see, take a smaller flat edge brush, quarter inch should do the trick. And then we'll take some romb or dark a little bit of burnt sienna and some alizarin crimson and then we'll mix those two together and then thin them out make them translucent with the matte medium 
and then what we'll do is we'll go over go over the original shadow but then we're also going to go past it a little bit doing a segmented glaze I'll tell you what let's add a little more alizarin crimson here a little more alizarin crimson and burnt sienna okay so we're just going past that and making a segmented glaze into the rest of his face and in the very very dark values you can you can use cooler tones like ultramarine blue but as you get into the lighter areas just so that the paint doesn't get chalky you know where it really looks muddy you can use some warmer tones um, if you were to look at all these shadows close up you'd see some cooler colors right within the shadows but as you get into the mid-tones and highlights they do tend to get a little more warm in tone and that's what I'm going to be endeavoring to do here and that's why I'm switching to alizarin crimson and burnt sienna Okay, so alizarin crimson and burnt sienna, just going over some of these other mid-tones. And so I'm bridging out some of the shadows I kind of illustrated with the sketch, but then blending it into the rest of the face. Drawing those wrinkles under his eyes. The uh, <clears throat> lower eyelid folds are concentric eyelid furrows, which I'm now learning the names for these wrinkles as I'm teaching on my wrinkles course, how to paint realistic wrinkles in acrylic. That's a course that I have available also at uh, realisticacrylic.com. But that, that particular course shows a man who's a little bit more advanced in age than this fellow here. So he has just some deeper wrinkles than, than this guy does. Um, but yeah, if you want to learn how to paint wrinkles, I would encourage you to enroll in that particular course, How to Paint Realistic Wrinkles in Acrylic. Alright, that's my plug for that. Now, I want to get the color on his lips a little more accurate, so let's take some organic red-orange which has just that deeper, more saturated red color. And with what's already on my brush, I'll just mix that into it. And then I'm going to go over that area, show you so you can see it here. And just begin to color in. Just think of it like a coloring book. You're just kind of filling in the color. But you're also being mindful of value as well. So you want to see that lighter area, that highlight in his lip, and kind of leave room for it. it. means that you don't paint it in. And then when you... Um, then when you get to that stage, you can define that a little more and add highlights to it as well. Okay, now... Let's just take that same color, because I see it a little bit in his upper lip for whatever reason. I'll add some of it in there. And there's some also some shadows by his nose bridge and where that leads into his forehead. So we're just dabbing in and beginning to develop that. There's a nice little shadow here showing the roundness of his forehead. And I'm just using some very short, choppy strokes in different directions, up, down, mostly, mostly going horizontally, but some go downwards, some go upwards. So they're kind of diagonal strokes. 
and that really tends to make things look a lot smoother. All right, so I, again, really want to use now more of this organic red-orange just on this side, showing the roundness of his forehead there as well. And you notice I only brought it up to this point. I only brought it up this far. I didn't pull it out any further because that's where it ends roughly on the picture. Now there's a smooth transition there. You want to see overall where it ends and that's about where your layer should end too. So just a bit corner of my brush to dab in a little hole there. Kind of a space that wasn't filled in yet. Okay and then you're going to have these transitional points that you have to capture. That's going to be a little trickier but that's a problem a problem you can solve on another day. It's a bridge you can cross later on. So I'll get into that later. For now, I think what we have here will be good. Yep, I think that'll be good enough. Yep, Rome wasn't built in a day as I've said many times, so just gotta do what we can. All right, I'm gonna have to leave off in this. There's, I'm not gonna be able to get this all in, in one layer or even a couple layers, so. One last thing though that I wanted to get because I try to work the portrait evenly. Let's just fill in that little bit of a value on the right portion of his nostril, area above it, that part of his nose. Okay. All right, so that would be it for this particular level. Now, if you're watching this at uh, Realistic Acrylic Portrait School as a course, go ahead and skip to the next lesson. Um, if you're watching this elsewhere, just wanna say thank you so much for watching. Um, let me know how this, this video helps and um, give it a thumbs up if you're happy with what you see, if it's uh, been helpful to you, share it with a friend. And then also at realisticacrylic.com, I have this particular course available and there'll be more courses just like this covering different aspects of portrait painting that I'm sure would be very helpful for you. So go to realisticacrylic.com and I'll see you there. Alright, God bless and we'll, we'll see you in, in future videos.